welcome to Mac and Thea Build Real World. This is going to be a Lord of the Rings stroke Burrows and Badgers stroke Saga stroke a whole bunch of other gaming systems build. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, sorry about that. Now, I'm already waiting to see how long it's going to take somebody to leave a message and tell me that Vikings didn't wear horns on their helmets. We know. In fact, I spend my professional life telling people that. But my professional life has mostly been put on hold because it's the first week of January. We're in loads of lockdown. I've got no work because every school in the country is closed. Um, so normally I would spend my time telling kids that Vikings didn't have horns on their helmets. But I'm in a workshop instead in an anonymous dressing gown because Sonic, what's the point of getting dressed? Mm. All right, so what are we doing? Uh, we're going to build uh, a larger hall that goes with the last model I made, which is this turf roofed croft for my Dunlendings uh, for Lord of the Rings. I've been really pleased with the responses that I've had from people who have been watching this, comments on my Facebook page or comments down below, um, which basically means that people have really enjoyed the fact that I've gone from Necromunda to come and do some fantasy stuff. The cool thing about this little model and the ones that I'm going to be building this time is that although I'm making them, this is going to be a haul for a chieftain, a Dunlending chieftain. This guy, look, he's mostly painted now. Um, although uh, I'm making it for him, it will work perfectly well for pretty much any fantasy game system that's 28mm. Uh, certainly my clan beasts in Burrows and Badgers will be able to make good use of it. Um, they will work pretty much, I don't know how historical this building is going to be from a Scottish Highlands, Irish kind of like moorland kind of point of view, but it won't look out of place in a Jacobite Rebellion game. Um, and it will certainly look fine in a game like Saga and Vikings and hairy ass barbarians running around all over the place. Anybody who's watching this film from that point of view, this build I hope is going to be relevant to you. So, so I'm out here in the workshop partially because uh, I was requested to be Ben Mayer, a new viewer. Hi Ben. Thanks for leaving comments all over several videos. Wanted to have a look around the rest of my workshop. And I, I, can't, you know what, I can't remember if I've done this before. So we're going to have a, a quick peep. I'm not apologising for the state of the place because, hey, anybody who's got a kind of like a tidy workspace, empty brain. Right. Harsh, I know, but it's true. Um, I like to work in what we call organised chaos. Uh, that's just totally me. So this is the workshop. Um, let me just get out of the way and show you around. This is my end of the workshop. I work here. Uh, this is my space to work in, my old teacher's desk, um, which is, I, I like lots, uh, full of crap. Um, we've got uh, cack boxes, those black drawers there are cack boxes. If you have not watched one of my videos before, especially Necromunda ones, you'll know that I'm famous now for digging through the cack. Not doing much digging through the cack when it comes to this model because it's going to be scratch built, but you know, it's around and about. Let's have a look what else we've got around here. Um, so, big chair, lots of people like my chair and the sheepskin on it. I'm a historical reenactor, loads of sheepskins about the place. Um, on my desk, those are what we got here. These are 3D printed figures that are anything up to six. Uh, 75 to uh, 100 millimeters tall need to be painted up for work and there's more there the kind of stuff that I need to do for work as well um, then up on the shelf up here a couple of my Necromunda builds uh, regular viewers will recognize um, Cindy's chop shop and uh, the docks rogue docks uh, surgery up there then over here we've got a bunch of board games not that many there are more indoors. Um, well, what else? Oh, going up, there's one of my favourite models of Burrows and Badgers that I've made. That's a marsh house here. And uh, a graveyard also for Burrows and Badgers too. These are, oh, look, more boxes of cack. That's Necromunda cack there. Lots and lots of Necromunda cack. And down there, drawers and drawers of actually organised cack. Uh, that's mostly fantasy components. That one is kind of sci-fi components, and there's drawer after drawer of it. My recent Necromunda builds stored in these whacking great big really useful crates, and I can't put those away at the moment. They should go in a shed over the other side of the garden. Then, uh, the rest of the workshop. This is um, my wife's end of the workshop, mostly. Look, I've put some of my cack over there too, that's not fair. She is an amazing costume maker. She makes costumes like this. 
and this. And costumes like this. And even this. And this is where she creates all of that. So we can't like have a work a workspace each. Um, and then when the weather's nice, we can't like hang out here and just beaver away. The two of us. When the weather's horrible, we kind of fight for space inside. She at the moment is making a Wookiee costume um, for herself, which takes up quite a lot of space too. So, yeah, that's the uh, Magathia Builder World workshop. Hope you like it. Oh, well, apologies if there is some humming in the background that you can hear. That's the hot air blower that's kind of like keeping me warm enough to do this part of the video out in the workshop. You're just going to have to live with that. And hopefully the lighting's all right today, so also focus isn't too much of a problem. Right, so we're going to get on and have a go at building a large hall for my Dunlending Chieftain. Now, I've had a number of different ideas about this. Obviously, I've gone away and looked at Saxon and Viking drinking halls, that kind of thing. Um... I've gone back to Lord of the Rings the movie and looked at Medeseld. They're very, very grand. Um, and although he's a chieftain, he's only a, a tribal chieftain of Dunlendians. And they don't have the kind of same uh, extravagance that full-on halls for the Rohirrim have. So I've kind of scaled back my ideas a little bit. This model is going to be made almost entirely from 10mm XPS foam. This stuff. I quite enjoy modelling with this. To be quite honest, I'm quite new to modelling with, with uh, foam. I've used polystyrene for donkey's years, but I haven't really done much with it. And what I'm trying to do now is uh, learn stuff and expand my knowledge and understanding of these things. So I'm, I'm doing this in foam purely because apart from anything else, look, models like this, I want there to be a lot of stonework involved. Um, in the past, I would have done that with foam core and then kind of clad it with something. But actually, the nice thing with this is you can carve into it and, and make shapes in it quite nicely. So I'm using this, uh, my ten, this 10 mil XPS foam that I've got, I literally just bought on Amazon. Um, it's insulation foam. I pr pretty much searched 10 millimeter XPS foam and this is what I got. And this sheet I think was uh, 60 centimeters by 120 centimeters and cost about eight pound 50. Check it out. If not, I normally get foam and a lot of other modelling supplies from uh, modelshop.co.uk, um, which is uh, on the high street, it's called 4D Model Shop. Pretty good store. There are loads and loads of places you can go to get this stuff. Though. So uh, I'm going to start off by um, working on the base. Then I'm going to figure out and, and fiddle around and draw out on one piece of XPS foam Hopefully, all the components for the building that I need all in one go. Then I'm going to cut them out, I'm going to uh, texture them, and then we'll put the whole model together. If you are interested um, and in making this model, uh, I haven't, but I'm quite happy to put templates for the model I make on my Facebook page as a PDF that you could come along and grab if you do so. If you like that, please make comments down below um, because then I know that people will use it. If it's not going to be used, then I'm not going to spend any time doing it. But if you fancy having a go at that, or for any of the crofts or the other things that you see, then um, do give me a shout, uh, leave a comment down below, and I'll make, to uh, I'll make the templates and put them on my Facebook page at Magrathia Models, and you can get them there. All right, now, look, actually, before we start, I've got to say a couple of thank yous as it goes. Um, First of all, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to this channel so far. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, this is the first time you're watching Magathia Builder Worlds, where have you been? I've been around for about six months now. I can't remember how many subscribers we've got, but we're on nearly 1,400, which is pretty cool. Um, I can't believe so many people want to tune in and watch Fat Hobby Gandalf sat in his workshop making little models, but I'm really pleased you're here. So if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. If you have subscribed already, then do please keep watching and make sure you leave comments down below. I can't believe that I'm now in the position to monetize my site, my channel. Um, I hope the adverts don't really annoy you um, because I know that when I watch YouTube videos, the adverts kind of annoy me. You know, this time next year, I'll be a millionaire. Actually, I've done some calculating in the first week of monetization and where I'm at from that point of view. Uh, it's probably going to take me 8,329 years to become a millionaire in US dollars. So um, please, you know, leave my channel running, leave all the adverts running. That would be really, really cool. I've also been invited to see if I want to have 
members, if people want to join my channel. I don't even know what that means, but apparently that's a bit like Patreon. Uh, but I'd have to work out what people will get as members and that kind of thing. If you fancy that, if you think that would be a cool thing to do, if you're somebody who is dying to join my channel so I get money, so I can carry on doing this, um, please again leave comments down below or get in touch with me on my Facebook page. Give me some ideas about the kind of things that you could get as being a member of Magafia Builder Worlds. It's kind of cool. This is totally new for me, so from that point of view, I'm a bit baffled by the whole thing. I do also have to say at this point, thanks very much to Gary of Black Dragon Miniatures uh, for sending me the bits he said. I've got a lot, I've got people sending me CAC now for models. Look, this came from Gary this week. That's going to end up on a Necromunda model, you bet your life. And also to Cal from Brush and Quill, who's also sent me a bunch of things he thought I could make good use of in my CAC box. I am not at this point saying to everybody, send me CAC. I don't need to be the receptacle of everybody's CAC, but on the other hand, uh, I do have a big CAC box that I like to dive into and it's to, for, to, for it to be the envy of the world. So if you want to contribute to my CAC box, give us a shout. Anyway, let's get on with the build. First of all, I really apologise if this bit is shaky. <laughs> but then I'm inside because it's like minus two outside in the workshop and sort that. This is the base for the Chieftain's Hall. Um, I've been messing around drawing in some roughly 10 mil walls working out where everything's going to go um so this is going to be the the front end with the entrance there's going to be the main hall and then there's going to be a lead to affair on the back end here which is going to be the chieftain's own quarters um chimney and a big wall here chimney and a big wall here two doors going in there little door coming out the back uh this is this base is so look eight inches by 14. I kind of fancied doing a bigger thing, but this is only a little Dunlending Chieftain. It's not like a Dunlending version of Medicilled, so from that point of view, um, it's going to do. I've got my 10 millimeter XPS foam, and I've drawn out onto it all the components I need all in one go. Again, if anybody's interested and you want, you'd like to have templates for this, give me a shout, and I'll make some and stick them on my Facebook page. So we've got two gable ends over here, uh, the two side walls of the main part of the hall. Then I've got the two lean-to walls and the back wall of the lean-to there. And these two are chimney breasts. This currently um, is spare, but that's actually going to make chimneys to go on the end, on the top of the gables, because uh, I completely forgot to draw them on. So the next job is going to be to cut all that out and then do a load of stonework, um, scribing into that, because of course... Uh, this model comes apart, so I'm going to have to scribe on the inside too, otherwise it ain't going to look right. Not many windows. These buildings don't have many windows. A couple of up high skylights there to put some light into the uh, main hall. One on this side here. This is where the Chieftain's Dais would be in the middle of the hall. So there's a window here and a quick door out there. and Some high up windows in his lean-to at the back to give him some light too. But there isn't much. Most of the light in this would come from torches and from the fires himself. Um, so I'm going to crack on and get all this lot cut out. Okay, so we've got all the pieces cut out. I've done a rough assembly to make sure that I've got an idea of how the uh, uh, model's going to go together. I'm quite pleased with that. And I now need to, as I said, start drawing onto this, scribing into this, the stonework. Um, this uh, particular piece is the inside back gable end uh, this doorway actually it's, it's going to be small this i might stay this size this doorway is going to go into the chieftain's private chambers so this is in the main part of the hall both sides of this need to have some texturing on um so i'm going to draw bricks but actually uh, some of this is inside so i'm not going to bother drawing bricks on the inside um the outside here this is going to be outside so this is going to have bricks drawn on it before i draw bricks on it i'm going to do something else to it first here is a roll of a ball of tin foil just scrunched up uh, in fact i've unscrunched it and moved it around um to give it a bit of a different shape and all i'm going to do with this Make re make the ball is I'm going to roll this ball over the polystyrene at the moment. 
the XPS foam is really smooth. Um, it's got a bit of texture to it, but it's like it's kind of like plastered. So what I want to do is make it rough. And although I'm going to cut stones into it, they'll still be really smooth. They'll be like bricks. And what I want is a rough hewn, dry stone kind of wall effect. So all I'm going to do, take my tin, my tin foil, foil ball and roll it across the surface. Of the model, either roll it or dig it into it one way or another. I'm doing this, I'm hoping that in a moment you'll be able to see the effect it has. All it's doing is getting rid of that smooth kind of finish to the polystyrene by the time I draw bricks onto it. It's um. will make an interesting surface to paint. And I'm not a massive, massive fan of painting fi figures and models. That's the bit I tend to see as the dull part. I like the making of it. So the more help I get with kind of like textures and things, the better. Can we see that? Let's have a look. Yeah, you can just about see this rough texture now all over this. Far, It's gonna look far more like stone. Now, I've had a bit of an experiment with this as well. I've got to confess. Uh, I wondered whether it will be worth drawing in, scribing in the stones first and then doing this texturing or doing the texturing and scribing in the stones. And I, in my considered opinion, I suggest that you do this bit first, which is why I'm doing it. And then you draw, do any scribing into the stonework afterwards rather than the other way around. I, I had a go at doing that with some stonework. Drew the stonework in and did this, it seemed to crack up the polystyrene more. So I don't think I, I could do without making another ball as it goes and actually being able to roll it, but it's kind of worked. The whole point is it's supposed to be pretty random after all, it's stone. Anyway, I'm now going to do this to every single component in that model. Um, Something else then I think I've learnt along the way, another one of Tim's top modelling tips, is that if you're going to do this, it'll be a darn sight easier to do it to the sheet of XPS that you're working with before you cut out all the bits, because this is now damn fiddly to work with. It would have been a lot easier had I uh, done the texturing first, to be honest. Remember, you also want to make sure you texture any uh, edges that might end up being... Um, on the outside i think the walls butt up against here so this is going to be exposed so i've textured that there as well not so important this bit here because that's just kind of like roof right that's enough of that let's go and do the, the rest of the model okay i'm sticking sticking together the house now the hall um every surface has stonework on one side that just goes all the way and the other side is rough textured you can just about see that, but I've done stone because that's going to end up just plaster surfacing on the inside. I like to think that the uh, chieftain has had the decorators in, done some nice work on what he's done. So I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue, I'm gluing down to the base, already glued these parts. So we've got uh, the chieftain's bed chamber, uh, one wall here, that's all going to glue on. I've then got this back wall and <laughs> annoyingly because of the nature of this stuff, this is a really thin piece, that was all one bit, <laughs> but I broke it <laughs> when I was working on that. But you won't be able to tell that when it's all stuck and glued, so that's no big deal. And then at the other end, walls. Now you can see sticking out here and over here, the inner cocktail sticks. I've deliberately left those sticking out because I want to might hang something from those. But I use 
cocktail sticks. <clears throat> or if you're in America land, you probably call them toothpicks. Um, as wooden pegs to peg this stuff together. So you can just about see, I think, the ends of two wooden pegs there, cut real close, and they'll get lost in the paintwork and on the other side as well. That helps to hold everything together. Although I use wood glue as a contact adhesive, that really helps keep the whole thing a bit of structure. So I'm now going to apply loads of glue, stick these last bits together. And then leave this overnight and then do the floor wish me luck right so the most effective way of using pva glue this stuff is to you make it work like contact adhesive and you do that by gluing both sides of what you're going to glue and then leave it five ten minutes Gotta catch it before it completely dries, but when it goes completely tacky, you act like a, a contact adhesive and get a really, really good bond. So I put glue on here and on here already. I'm gonna glue the other ends of the walls. So I'm gonna glue this model together and glue it down to the base. Okay, this is um where I'm at the, now, the hall is all completely stuck. You can see uh, the walls that are going to be plastered on the inside, all the stonework on the outside. It's the odd peg left visible because I might hang a trophy or something like that. Next job is to put cardboard flagstones into the uh, base of the hall and maybe round some of the outside. For that, I'm going to use cardboard box. Actually, this one is from uh, Wild Men of Dunland. Um, I'm going to cut this into large flagstones um, and I'm going to fill the bottom of the hall just like I've done with the other model I'm making this week which is this uh, Dunlending Croft Come Forge it's going to be a lean to on the outside with forge on the outside of this one and I've already done the floor in that so that's the process that's just cardboard that's the other side of this, this box stuck in with um, Yoohoo, oh clear adhesive. So that's the next process. Uh, let's have a look at that and see how that works. Okay, this day then I don't tend to do an enormous amount of measuring. I've always got a ruler around and I've always got a figure around as well to give me an idea of scale. Just so we know, look, there's the chieftain stood outside his hall. Perfect. Um, most of the time I just kind of offer up cardboard um, for what I'm doing. So look, these are the edges of the boxes here. Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth strategy battle game. And all I'm literally going to do is take a pair of scissors. That's kind of about the right size. I want that to go inside the doorway there. Cut it roughly to size. Don't want it to be exact. I don't want it to be entirely symmetrical. Because the whole point is these guys are not the most sophisticated building builders this is probably the most sophisticated building that i'm going to make for done lendings i'll make a couple more but they're going to be kind of other little crofts and hobbles really so that's kind of like going to sit in there slap some glue down stick it on do the other side and then do inside the only tricky bit is going to be cutting cardboard around Whoop two fireplaces a fireplace at either end of this grand done lending mead hall there we go one let's do the other end now right there's the flagstone in it's pretty simple and you can see all the gaps i'm now going to texture the outside so i'm going to use gravel and sand if you've seen my videos before you'll know i use kind of this kind of stuff get up close in that zoom there we go uh large gravelly bits and then coral sand it's going to go around our texture to the outside of this this is going to be wild and woolly if i was making a row here in one of these it, i'd probably go to the town with more on the outside and make it look a bit more formal but this is not it's in the fens and the, the moors of dunland so 
it's going to end up being grassy and stone and, and rubbly outside. In fact, I'm probably going to go outside and go and grab a few bits of small slate off the garden as well. Put that on there too, just to give it a good hard kind of edge to the texture. Um, and then I'm going to seal the XPS foam with Mod Podge um, so I can get on with the painting. Oh, I'm now going to make the roof. Oh, one thing after another. And got to do it all for this building too. Going to do exactly the same thing. This one actually needs some bolts work now because I want to put a couple of uh, piles here and a bit of a roof around the chimney so I've got to cover over the forge area outside. Um, we'll have a look at that as well. Okay, so now this is where we're at. From a sand point of view and, and texture, I've got slate on here. I've got the gravelly stuff. Most of it's covered with sand around there. All the way around the outside of the model. Now I've got to let that dry for a little while. Then I'm going to seal it with Mod Podge. Which will be an overnight job then. And then I should be able to get on with actually making the roof tomorrow. That kind of thing. Hmm. Coming on. Okay, so it's time to seal this model. XPS foam needs sealing if you're going to paint on it at all. Um, and the best way to seal it I found is using this stuff. Mod Podge. It's a form of PVA glue. It's used a lot. I use lots and lots of it. Um, and then when it's dried, I'd go outside and spray it all. But it's freezing this evening. It's, I can't remember what day January is, but it's bloody cold. I'm not going out to the spraying booth tonight at the garage. So instead, I am mixing black Hobbycraft acrylic paint in with the Mod Podge. And I'm going to brush that on over everything. Uh, and then that hopefully will be um, uh, undercoated, primed, and ready to paint. Then all black in the morning, I can get on. And then tomorrow I can do this, the roof and paint it. And that should be it. Job finished. All right, so we're at the painting stage right now. Um, I'm put all the painting into this video. Is it really necessary? If you saw the last video, this is pretty much the same paint price process um so this was undercoated as you saw with uh just mod podge and black acrylic paint mixed into it which has worked perfectly well um it's now had a number of different gray dry brushes starting with mechanicus gray i think um working up to gray sear and then with some uh usheptie bone on the top the inside walls uh will have a plaster rendering so that's uh, Morgast, I think, or Yushabti Bone, which will end up becoming mostly white, and then I've got the woodwork to do there. Um, the outside has had a Mornfang Brown uh, painted all across all the base because that will get dry brushed up with XV88, um, and again, a bone colour, and then flock added where appropriate. So, coming on, Ooh, the uh, uh, other croft with the forge also getting done at the same time. Check it out. Anvil barrel forge outside. Coming on quite nicely. I'm really pleased with these. Um, so today, got to do the plaster. I've got to do the odd interior detail. The doors and fireplaces. The outside. Then I've got to do the roofs. I haven't actually made the roofs for these two models yet. That's the next big job. Right, so I'm making a roof for this. It's going to have two separate roof pieces. Really simple rectangular roof. To go on the chieftain's sleeping quarters here and then uh, a gabled roof to go on the main hall it's going to lift off it's going to be covered in turf it's going to be going to need two bits of cardboard i'm using a mounting card go on like this that's about uh one and a half mil two mil thick i suppose um this length here is 10 inches across there, and it's five up to the apex of the roof. So I'm going to use two rectangles, 10 inches by five, and then I'll have to cut them in around to fit the chimney. I'm going to use a couple of offcuts of XPS foam with the same, it's a right angle triangle effectively, um, I'm going to cut beam out 
two or three beams to give the roof its shape and hold give it strength so when I stick all the turf on it doesn't change shape too much so apologies for the wobbliness but this part of this video was made in the living room and I'm all hands free okay so I've got two roof sections like this and as you can see I've cut XPS foam beams that are going to give the roof its shape annoyingly I put in this aesthetically pleasing beam to hold the two chimneys apart and put it up too high so I had to cut out notches to accommodate the beam but that's going to be fine so I'm going to stick all that on using PVA glue and when that's dry I'm going to stick the roof material to it I've also stuck the lean to roof it's just got a piece of XPS foam it's going to hold that lean to in place and that will have turf on that as well which would be quite cool these little windows here which would be just above the turf okay so i'm applying red fur this teddy bear fur to the gold roof it doesn't really matter what way the pile goes because it's going to be turf and i'm going to make sure it all stands up as much as i can but i'm doing the lean to roof first of all that's the base i'm going to cover the whole of this roof with you then I'm just going to stick this bad boy on. And then I'm going to do that to all the other roof sections too. It's going to take a little while. All I do is lay the roof on the fur. Draw around it roughly with a pen. Marking where the chimney cutout is going to be. Now it doesn't matter if it's too rough. And I want quite a lot around the edges. Because I want to have quite a lot of turf overhanging this roof if I can. It's not a neat manicured hobbit garden. This this is just a building with grass growing on the roof. There we are, the cuddliest drinking hall in Dunland. <laughs> Need to stick that down and then a wheeled the Mod Podge. Things I've discovered whilst making this model. When you affect the structural integrity of the foam and everything you put on top of it becomes too heavy, it collapses. All of my supports on this roof have snapped. If I'd used foam core, actually, if I hadn't put in that beam across the top of the building, and then I had to cut that out of it, I'd be all right. So I need something else in the there to um strengthen the roof nuts here's my solution for the the broken wood beams then i'm going to use gorilla wood glue um on these cardboard straps they're going to stick down i'm going to attach put glue on each one i'll put glue on each side of each beam let it go off use it as a contact adhesive and stick it back together and hopefully they'll all hold it and give the model the structural integrity it requires. Now actually, I'm just doing a quick test on polis on the high density polystyrene super glue because if super glue doesn't eat the polystyrene, I'm going to super glue those cardboard straps and that'll speed up the whole process. All right, test success. That's one very handy piece of cardboard, very, very stuck to that high density polystyrene. I'm going to super glue those little cardboard straps. Hopefully, that will mend my collapsed roof fingers crossed so that's the chieftain's drinking all finished let's have a closer look at the model um turf roof again like the croft uh as we saw i had a few issues structurally with it which i fixed i'm quite pleased with the top of this again i'm going to go back and i'm going to fill in a few places but this i think it looks really effective the, the roof then is a mix of uh, static grass tufts and wooden scenics green flock. Um, this time painted on with uh, a mix of PVA, uh, well, Mod Podge and uh, green paint mixed into it. The roof was sealed with green brown Mod Podge this time as well instead of spray. In fact, I haven't sprayed this model at all after a number of conversations last time. I thought it'd be interesting to see what I did. So around the back, the lean-to works quite nicely. 
Um, the Chieftain's own sleeping quarters. They're quite good. I'm still eradicating and chasing down the odd bit. I'm trying to make sure I can't see any of the original teddy bear fur. I've also then based this just like I've done with all the other models. So that it's a mix of Mornfang Brown and Lead Belcher and XV88 dry brushing um, and then grass in some places because that works better on my modular boards than others. Uh, the slate as well. And I've added a few uh, plants as well. These are kind of raspberry, blackberry bushes type things growing up around it too. So this is quite an effective model. I'm really pleased with that. Uh, the lid, the roof comes off quite easily. My strapping on the, the beams did the job. That's far more structurally sound now. Um, and as you can see, I just painted black on the inside. The inside of the hall at the moment is completely bare. There are various things I'm tempted to do with this. I might build a little dais up here that would be the chieftain's seat. Um, but at the moment, I've left it pretty much empty. Most Lord of the Rings games aren't going to go inside this anyway. But I have built this hall with other games in mind. So uh, that may well get inside it, like burrows and badgers, that kind of thing. So the only thing I haven't done for any of these models is built made doors. I probably will go back to these and make balsa wood doors. Uh, but from a gameplay point of view, they aren't really necessary. I have also, you've probably noticed, made some banners. My Dunlendings are from the Bear Clan. Um, there's a whole bunch that are named uh, clans that are uh, named in one of the online uh, Lord of the Rings uh, websites. There's very little known about Dunlendings, uh, but they've been given this kind of like Celtic kind of feel, which kind of goes with, certainly with what Tolkien would have felt about um, the Anglo-Saxons arriving and pushing the uh, post-Roman British to the edges of, uh, you know, to the, the, the west of the British Isles, that kind of thing. And that would have fitted the narrative that was around when he was uh, alive and a professor of Anglo-Saxon. Whether that's now exactly the same, as some historians now would argue that the Saxons arrived and just kind of like settled down with the local Britons and mingled straight away. Who knows? But in Lord of the Rings terms, the Rohirrim, really are very much the Anglo-Saxons who arrive and push the men of Dunland out of the best land into the, the wilds of Dunland. Um, and these guys then have been given character. So I've got inside the hall, there are two boar banners, one on each chimney stack that are taken down when the, the tribe goes to war. And there's also um, uh, a battle trophy, uh, a banner stolen from the clan of the ox, uh, there's somewhere there will be a Rohirrim standard to go in there as well that they've won in battle too. I'm trying to make these characters, these, this nation, this race of people a bit more than just kind of like two-dimensional enemies that Rohirrim get to line up and hit. Uh, certainly that's why I'm going to all the effort to make all the scenery that goes with them. Now, the, the bonus build uh, in this video, of course, was this other croft and forge. It's a little bit bigger. Let's reach over here than the original croft are made here we go the original croft had got a gable end door this one has got is more like most crofts that you see in scotland and ireland with a, a door in the um the side wall uh, and then to give it a bit more interest i kind of made this one with a, a forge at this gable end as well with a couple of little details an anvil or a barrel the one thing i haven't done with these models is really got the town with lots of tiny little details by rope and torches and that kind of thing I'm kind of, kind of tempted to do that, but for the minute what I want to do is get a nice collection of scenery built so I can start playing some games and then I'll go back to them. Let's have a look at them on the table. So there we have it on the table. I'm really quite pleased with that. Uh, the uh, looks pretty harsh compared to the buildings of the Rohirrim, the Rohan. Um, it needs to. It's in the uplands. It's they haven't got as many trees. It's a harder life where these Dunlendings live. I want this kind of hall to kind of reflect that. I've done quite a good job comparing it to uh, the, the buildings of of Iceland and the Scottish Highlands and the like. They look alright. They certainly have distinctive character compared to Rohirrim buildings, which is one of the things I'm trying to get. I'm definitely trying to get more out of these this army than oh well yeah just row here in with different hats um so yeah I'm, I'm going for a different look altogether uh, and i think the turf roof and the stonework is really helping to achieve that
Now on the inside certainly looks big enough for a bar fight. A bit of a scrap. Three or four characters. Give me a laugh. Here's the chieftain's bed chamber. Again, it's a bit of me that goes, I'll add details there. If I do use this for Burrows and Badgers games, that will end up with a bed and all sorts of other bits and pieces in it. But for uh, Lord of the Rings, it's probably just not necessary. But the little lean-to roof goes on quite nicely there. Fits there, nice little windows up the top. The... Standards are only stuck up on the moment with blue tack. I can remove those if they're not appropriate for other game systems. And I think it works. This works just as well for B and B as anything else. Yeah. Members of the Order of the Crown are being attacked by a bunch of clan beasts who are a bit miffed that the Order of the Crown have penetrated so far into Strathclotter. I've got to say, I'm really pleased with this set of models. Um, I think it, they really work for the Dunn endings. They clearly work as well with uh, Burris and Badgers figures, but I reckon they could work pretty well for quite a lot of um, Upland type games um, throughout history. Uh, if you're uh, playing Jacobite Rebellion stuff or the Massacre at Glencoe in the 1690s, um, yeah, go you, that's cheerful. Woo! Um, they'll make uh, pretty good additions for that. If you're playing stuff, if you're playing games like Saga or other Viking um, based games, they'll make pretty good scenery for that too. So I think these are uh, kind of fairly ubiquitous and useful bits of scenery. And just for those who you would be missing out if you're one of my Necromunda followers and you're following this just because it's cool and you're interested in other stuff too, I know there's somebody you've been missing. So just pop down here and say hi. For those of you who don't know, this is Ubiquitous Orlock. And I even had comments on my last video about the Croft that Ubiquitous Orlock didn't get to make an appearance. He is my scale model for Necromunda buildings. I'd just leave him lying around, pick him up, and stick him on to make sure everything's right. And just so Necromunda players aren't feeling left out with this video as an addendum, here is Ubiquitous O outside the back door of the Chieftain's Drinking Hall. You're bonkers. So there you go. I really hope you've enjoyed this build. Um, I didn't mean to build two buildings in one go. I wasn't in a video the filming of two buildings in one go. It just kind of happened. This little settlement now is really coming on quite nicely. It needs really a couple more little crofts like this, which I'm probably not going to make videos of. Um, and then I'm going to make a cow buyer, that kind of thing, um, for the done lendings. And then that's pretty much done. I will go back and add some more details. But as a, a relatively quick set of effective scenery, I think it works really well. It needs more now upland and moorland kind of scenery in the right kind of forest. So I want to uh, get some decent pine trees. I've been looking into that and I think I'm probably going to have to make my own, which is going to be interesting. I've been looking at a number of different videos already on, on doing that. So I'm going to have a bit of an experiment. But that's going to be really time consuming. So I'm not sure when that's going to happen because I want to get on. I want to get on with this um the rest of this build uh the board that this is on is my uh modular battlefield that i've made oh, i don't know 15 years ago or more now i think um i certainly had it a very long time and i would really love to make a, a new modular battlefield i'm going to do that with stuff for the shire i should think i've also got some new necromunda I just got thousands of ideas for necromunda racing around and i'm going to go back and do some of that very soon um so to be quite honest, I don't know what's coming next. It might be another quick Lord of the Rings video, or it might be go back to Peer Town in Necromunda uh, and get a couple of those tiles off my chest. And then I might kind of like balance up uh, fantasy and uh, Necromunda stuff as we go in the next little while. I've also got some uh, builds to do for my work as well. Um, so it's going to be an interesting time. So to make sure you don't miss any of that, 
if you haven't already make sure you subscribe down there click that subscribe button uh, and make sure you follow Magrathea Build a World. Come and find me on my Facebook page uh, at Magrathea Models as well. Say hello over there too. Um, we haven't had to go digging through the cack. There you go. You nearly missed out um, on this uh, video. But if you'd like to be a cack diver on an Necromunda video, give me a shout over there. And you also can go there, get your Necromunda t-shirts. I would really appreciate your thoughts on membership and what I could do and that kind of thing. Is that something you we really want? I really want? You really want out of a video channel like this i have no idea um all i know is i'm having a really good time making different models it's been challenging this last little while due to lockdown my work messing around and all sorts of other bits and pieces and making models for me and making models for you is kind of keeping me sane and i'm going to make sure that that carries on as best i can so thanks for watching magathia builder world i'll see you next time